Hi there, it's Diane the Nursing Geek. Welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk a little bit about how I'm changing up the way I organize things, particularly in my bullet journal, but also this thing over my shoulder here, which we'll get to in a little bit. I mentioned in the bullet journal migration, I think that some things really hadn't been working terribly well in the way I had been setting up my bullet journal in the past, such as having all of my trackers at the beginning of each month. It was nice when I could actually do it, having all that information in one place for the whole month. Part of the role of the trackers, though, is to remind me these are things I want to be doing. And that wasn't happening if I was so rushed that I wasn't getting to them because I was just going directly to, okay, what do I actually need today, this week, you know, right now. I tried a couple different Dutch door approaches, one that was vertical and one that was horizontal, which is a more typical Dutch door, more like an actual Dutch door. I wasn't really happy with either of them because among other things, it meant I was losing half a page that I wouldn't be able to use for anything else. I decided not to do that. Then I looked a little harder at how I was making use of the space in my weekly setups as it is. And I saw that I really did have some room to put stuff on the sides and still have enough room within my, at least Monday through Friday, to put my little time blockers. Those are hugely helpful in keeping me realistic, or at least kind of realistic, in what I think I can get done on a given day. Because if I go through and I mark off, okay, here are the actual appointments I have, times I'm in class, times I'm in meetings, <laughs> time I need to sleep. How many hours do I have left to do stuff? And then figure out what stuff is going to fit in that time. So I, I didn't want to lose those, and I didn't want to lose space that would make it impossible to use those. I did find that I could lose eight squares from each side and still basically pull off what I need in the little daily blocks. It's tight, but it works. So I gave it a trial run in the old bullet journal, I did the first couple of days of the week that started with December 29th or December 30th. And while I don't normally split weeks across journals or duplicate them, in this case I duplicated it across the journals, in the new bullet journal, I blocked out that week again, made some changes based on what I had run into on those couple of days, December 30th and 31st, and gave that the rest of the week to see how that would go. It actually went pretty well. I did find things I wanted to change a little bit. For one thing, I had, for some bizarre reason, only given myself seven squares on each side, which kind of worked, but was pushing it because if you see the way I have the trackers set up, Monday through Sunday are going across. So if I'm also going to have something going down the side that says what each of these columns is, or what each of these rows of things um, are, then I was off in the margins. Which, I, it could be done, but I didn't particularly like it that way. So for the next coming week, I made sure I gave myself eight blocks on each side and rearranged things a little, little tiny bit so that I could just have things flow a little better. The other thing that I kind of realized is I had been separating out my physical exercises and miracle morning components from all the other habits and things that I was tracking and calling just that piece wellness. 
but all of it's wellness. I track my sleep because that makes me pay attention to whether I'm getting good quality sleep, whether I'm getting to bed at a decent hour, or whether I'm staying up doing things until 2, 3, 4 in the morning and then have to get up at 6. Spoiler alert, that doesn't work well. Uh, the reason I track some of the other habits, you know, do I remember to take my morning medication before running out the door to work? Do I make sure that I have at least some time to write every day? And am I making at least some attempt to have time to do fiber arts? Those are both things that feed my soul. Having that little checkbox to remind me, oh yeah, this is the thing I want to do today, is a way to make me make time for these things that I need to feed my soul to be well. That's what wellness is. I, instead of labeling one piece of this wellness, I'm considering both of those side columns. They're all about wellness. Um, whether it's looking at sleep, whether it's looking at habits, whether it's looking at mood, whether it's looking at pain, whether it's looking at, you know, this, the exercises from this physical therapist, the exercise from that physical therapist, and then the other pieces of Miracle Morning, meditation, affirmations, visualization, reading and journaling. Um, oh yeah, and yoga, which for the month of January at least, I'm back to doing daily. I'm hoping that we'll be able to continue once school kind of ramps back up. I love Yoga with Adrian's 30 days of yoga at the beginning of the year. It is a great way to kind of set the tone for the year and I'm hoping I can stick with that going forward. For now, it was just looking at January. So those are some of the changes I've made in my bullet journal to see if this will help those trackers serve their purpose, which is not just to collect the data, although it is useful. It is very useful when going to a doctor's appointment or whatever to be able to say, yeah, this is exactly what's going on with my sleep. This is exactly what's going on with my pain levels. This is exactly what's going on with whatever. So for those things, yeah, it was nice having it in the full month, but um, it's not very helpful if you're saying, well, this is what was going on during the days I actually had it together enough to document. But um, other than that, who knows? That's, that's not very helpful. Will I always stay on top of it every week? Probably not. There will be weeks that are completely off the hook when I probably won't even draw them in. Because especially for all the exercises, all the little icons I invented to remind myself what each exercise is and whatever, I can definitely tell you there will be weeks when I will not have the patience to do that. And those are probably the weeks that that's not going to happen anyway. It's an experiment. It's all an ongoing experiment. Speaking of experiments, that thing over my shoulder. So that is a Kanban board. And let me see if I can get this camera to actually capture it a little better without just shooting footage of the ceiling. Okay, can't zoom in when you have it at this, in this uh, orientation. Fine. So Emily Bourne kind of inspired me to look into this Kanban board approach and see if I could find a way of doing it that would actually be useful for me. And after watching some of the other videos she recommended, which I will put various links below. This is what I came up with. Different colors for different things and also different columns. So there's writing stuff, there's taking care of my home stuff, and there's personal stuff, most of which boils down to the language learning ASL stuff at the moment. And I tried not to get too granular in the specific items that I put on the various post-it notes because I just felt that that would be too overwhelming. And for things that 
are that do kind of pile up like this is 15 weeks of ASL modules well weeks one through five can be by themselves but then six through ten and eleven through fifteen can just be all piled up until I'm ready to deal with them otherwise it's going to just look like an overwhelming um, undoable mess so the idea is that when thing, I get a bird's eye view of the things that I'm planning to do for the next three months and when they move into, okay, I'm working on them, they go into this doing zone and that's when they should be also going into my bullet journal to tell me, yep, this is the piece of it I want to be doing today. And then once it's actually done, it can move to the bottom so that I can see, oh yes, look, I'm actually accomplishing things. I'm planning to do something similar at work. Um, that's probably going to be even more involved and I'll probably do something on that a bit later because that's going to take a little more figuring out how to code it between not only different types of responsibilities, but then different classes and yeah. So that's it for now. Next time I'm thinking I'll go over some of my specifically writing related organization stuff because that's just apparently my theme for January is getting things organized or trying to and uh, seeing what works, what doesn't before things really ramp up and start getting hectic. Do you tend to do this sort of thing this time of year as well? Um, or do you have everything all ready to go by January 1st? Um, let me know. Let's have a conversation either in comments or on Discord, which is also linked below. And until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.